Hello future physicist, Mr. Avis here. In this video we're going to talk about position and time graphs, velocity time graphs, and acceleration time graphs. Let's start with position time graphs. So these are graphs of position versus time. So position will be on the y-axis, time will be on the x-axis. Some key parts of that, the slope of the line that you see on the position time graph is your velocity. This is useful because a lot of times we're going to try to find the velocity from our position time graphs. And any time you have a curved graph, that means the slope is changing. That means the velocity is changing. That means we have acceleration. Let's look at a couple of these. So we know that slope equals velocity. So here we have a position time graph, and we want to have positive velocity. So we draw a graph that has some sort of a positive slope. Over here, we have a graph that we want negative velocity. So we need to have some sort of a negative slope. Not too bad. With acceleration, we said that if there's a curve, there's acceleration. Well, it's easy to know if there's a positive acceleration or a negative acceleration. In the graph on the left, you can see we have a positive acceleration because we start slowing down in the negative direction, and then we start speeding up in the positive direction. That means we have a positive acceleration. A shortcut, it looks kind of like a smile. Smiles are positive, right? On the graph on the right, we have a negative acceleration. Slowing down, going in the positive direction, and then it starts speeding up, going in the negative direction. Shortcut would be, looks like a frown. Frowns are negative. Let's look at this position time graph and talk about what is represented by this graph. What motion is described here? Now to start off with, the horizontal section is showing us that there is no motion. Whenever you have a horizontal line on a position time graph, there is no motion. You're stationary. Your position is not changing. Then the graph slopes upward, which gives us a constant positive velocity. So we're moving in the positive direction at a constant rate. Then we go horizontal again, which means we stop stand there for a second, and then we're back to a positive velocity again, except this one's steeper, that means we're going faster in the positive direction. We level off another horizontal section, means we stopped again, and then we go to a steep negative slope, which means we have a negative velocity going pretty fast, and we're moving in the negative direction. Let's talk about velocity time graphs and acceleration time graphs. So velocity time graphs Velocity is on the vertical axis, and time is on the horizontal axis. Now the slope of a velocity time graph is acceleration, because we're talking about changing velocity, so we know that's acceleration. We can also find the displacement from velocity time graph uh, by finding the area between the graph and the time axis. In order to find the area, we're going to use triangles and rectangles and some combination thereof to figure it out. So let's look at this velocity time graph. We have a constant negative slope, nice straight line. What is this talking about? Well, this could be describing a ball. We throw the ball up in the air, so it has an initial positive velocity. Remember, because up is positive. It's slowing down as it goes up until it reaches its peak. When it reaches its peak, it stops momentarily, has a zero velocity momentarily, and then it starts coming back down with a negative velocity. And as we'll learn, gravity is causing the acceleration on the ball, which uh, is constant, a constant negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So our acceleration, the slope of this graph, should be constant. And in this case, it is. Now let's determine the displacement on this graph between 2 seconds and 5 seconds. So we need the area between our graph and the t-axis. So we want this region. And this region is a parallelogram. You could use your equations for parallelograms to find the area. Or you could also take a big triangle between 0 and 5 seconds minus the small triangle between 0 and 2 seconds. That's what I'm going to do. So we have 1 half base times height for the big triangle minus 1 half base times height for the small triangle. We plug in our numbers for each triangle. And by doing the subtraction, we figure out that the displacement from 2 seconds to 5 seconds is 105 meters. Now with an acceleration time graph, we don't do a whole lot with those in this class, but here we could graph the acceleration that's described in this uh, problem. 
So here we have our axes, accelerations on the vertical axis times on the horizontal axis. And we're looking for a car moving with a constant acceleration of positive 2 meters per second squared for 20 seconds. So we'll draw a line that looks like this. Then it travels at a constant velocity for 30 seconds. Constant velocity means zero acceleration for the next 30 seconds. Then it's going to travel the constant acceleration of negative 4 meters per second squared for 30 seconds. So we're going to kind of jump between horizontal sections here. It's not realistic in that we have this car cha instantly changing acceleration. Um, but we sometimes live in a happy physics world where we don't have to deal with changes and we just jump instantly from one situation to the next. And that's the case with our acceleration time graphs in this class. So you're always going to have horizontal lines for acceleration time graphs in this class. And here we have a picture of the SR-71 Blackbird, one of the fastest planes ever. Uh, its top speed is still classified. So it had some pretty crazy velocity, and I'm sure the acceleration would be uh, quite a thrill to experience. And you haven't been able to see this, but my dog, who loves tennis balls, has been anxiously awaiting this moment. There you go, Abby. See you next time.